We're at the midpoint of the year. How are you tracking for your goals? The first half of the year is basically over. Happy 4th of July, obviously very patriotic, go USA, all that great stuff. I look at this time of year as something a little different, as a time of year to evaluate how the last six months went. Typically, you want to see 60% of your business pending and sold by the time you hit June 30th of every year. So when you evaluate where you are and have that super important meeting with yourself, there's three possible outcomes how you're tracking for your goals. You're either ahead, you're behind, or you're on pace. Those are the three buckets, and you're going to fall into one of them. There's no in between. You're on pace, you're ahead, or you're behind. So step one in any evaluation of yourself and your business is to determine how you're tracking. Here's the problem. A lot of agents don't track and measure anything, so they have no idea what's going on in their business. So the best way to do this is look at how many homes you have pending and sold for the year and how much income is on the books. That's gonna be the best way for anyone to track and most people will have that number. So once you determine which bucket you fall into, then you want to act appropriately. So let me start with the easy ones. If you're ahead, congratulations. Way to execute on your plan. You may wanna consider upping your goal a little bit. And I'm not talking about upping it for the year, but maybe, hey, this month, I'm gonna to try to do one more deal. Or these next 90 days, I'm gonna to try to take three more listings, one per month. You might wanna look at how can you keep the momentum going and keep doing what's worked. Don't make this mistake. Oh, I just did a lot of business. I'm gonna try something totally different. Or I'm just gonna stop doing what worked in the first place. Real estate agents do this all the time. Don't make that mistake. Keep running the plays that work and do more of what's working. That's what you wanna do if you're pacing ahead. Maybe up the goal and keep doing what you've been doing. If you're on pace, I've got a couple questions for you. Did you weight your number for the seasonality in the market? You don't want to be at 50% for the year. You want to be at 60%. And do you have to make any adjustments to account for the seasonal flow in the business? We haven't had a seasonal market in a few years now. This year is very seasonal, very normal in terms of the seasonal patterns that we've seen in the Northeast especially. So are you making adjustments to keep your momentum going? Because you're doing some great stuff that works. What adjustments do you have to make? And are you breaking down your activities into daily, weekly, monthly? That's going to be the strategy here. But keep doing what works. Again, you're having success. You're on pace for the year. Don't mess with it now. And maybe try to work a little harder and maybe up your production over the next 90 days. How do I have 10 to 20 more conversations a week? How do I go on one extra appointment a week? Look at those objectives and lead indicators in your business and see if you can up that number. Now, if you're behind, here's good news. There's 180 plus days left in the year. So you've got time to catch up as long as you have a plan. One of the observations I have is that a lot of folks, they say, well, I'm just trying to sell as many homes as I can. I'm just trying to get as many deals as I can. That is not a plan. As many as possible doesn't, give you anything specific, it's not measurable, and it's not time-based. You want to have smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-based. Those are the five components. That's what the acronym stands for. So if you're pacing behind, I would look at your next six months, and what's your goal for the next six months? Is it selling 10 homes? Is it selling 18 homes? Is it selling 12 homes? Whatever number that is. And then once you come up with the goal, and then you want to break it down on a monthly basis. How many homes do you want to put under contract in the month of July, in the month of August, September, October, November, December? Plan it out like that. If you're telling me you're not motivated by, the, by having goals, get some motivation behind it. Tie something emotionally strong to hitting that goal and what that's going to do for your life, and it's going to get you way more excited. So you want to plan out month by month what you want to get done. And then once you have the monthly goal hit, Forget planning the next six months. Let's plan the next 30 days. Let's keep it simple and chunk it down. So if you want to sell two homes over the next 30 days, here's the questions you want to answer. How many new appointments do you need to go on? How many offers do you need to write? How many conversations do you need to have to set those appointments? And what other activities do you need to partake in on a daily basis to hit those numbers? So it starts with conversations. This is two-way communication about real estate. Phone calls create conversations. 
text and email creates reactions. You've heard me say this before, and a lot of great trainers and coaches say it because it's true. You've got to pick up the phone to set appointments. So how many conversations do you need to have on a weekly basis to hit your weekly appointment goal? And then once you have that weekly appointment goal, how many appointments do you need to go on and new people do you need to meet to write an offer or get a listing? And then once you write an offer or get a listing, what's your listing sign rate and what is your offer acceptance rate? These are all the numbers you want to break down. So the real issue here is that people just keep saying, oh, all I want to do is get to this number. But without having a daily, weekly, monthly plan, you just want to chunk it down over the next 30 days, that's going to get you on track. So forget about what needs to happen in the next six months. If you're behind your goal and getting you on your goal is going to be selling two, three, four, five homes a month, whatever the number is, how many conversations do you need to have during that month to make that happen? How many appointments do you need to go on, listing and buyer appointments? How many offers do you need to write? How many listings do you need to take? Those are the four things you want to look at. And there's other things you can track, like number of showings or follow-ups or videos or texts or anything else. Start with those four. Conversations, appointments set, appointments you're going on, listings taken, offers written. That fourth one's kind of the same thing. It's just different for the buy or sell side. It's going to be a little bit of a different business. Determine that and then break it down by week. And if you don't hit the number in the first week, adjust for the second week. That's the way to do this. And that's how you get back on track if you're running behind. The most important thing here, without a plan, you've got no direction. There's no number to hit. You're swimming without a guide. You're going nowhere. You're just kind of walking in circles if there's not a direction you're trying to go. So figure out the six-month goal, chunk it down, come up with a plan, what's your daily discipline, then execute. That's the game.